Hello, book team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Faye Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and I want to invite you to join me in a read-along. And I'm happy to tell you that this read-along will count for one point in the Summer Romance Book Bingo that is hosted and created by Sarah from Steeped in Books and co-hosted by several other wonderful hosts. So I had been talking to my friend Donna, who is from the channel Paradonna Palimpsest. She does not do videos, but that's her channel name in case she's ever commented to your videos. And we were talking about doing a read-along of a particular book, and I asked her if she would mind if we invited other people, and she said, absolutely, that would be great. And I talked to Sarah about anyone who participates can get a point towards the bingo prizes, and she said, absolutely. So now that this is happening, check with the other hosts too because if any of them decide to host read-alongs during the summer romance book bingo then that could potentially open up more opportunities for points for the bingo so the book that i am going to be hosting as a read-along is the house at riverton by kate morton this was kate morton's debut novel it is several years old she has come out with several other wonderful books since then. The only one I have read by her is The Forgotten Garden. I understand from some people who have read this that this one may not be as good as some of her later works, but I still want to read it. I know several people who I am Goodreads friends with have this on their TBR, so I hope that you know any of them who would like to read this this summer even if you're not participating in the Summer Romance Book Bingo, you can still participate in this read-along. We are going to start this in the middle of June and continue on through the end of July. I haven't got the exact schedule worked out, but I will put in the description the start date, and we will discuss this on my Goodreads group, which is Lizzie Faye's Comfy Corner then if you are participating in the book bingo and you want to get a point for participating all you need to do is go on sarah's goodreads group which is the create your own readathon group she has a topic called points tally and you just need to report in there at the end of july or whenever you finish this book and write her a note that you participated in lizzie Fay's read-along of the house of riverton and you will get a point added to your total for the bingo. So I don't know anything about this book, but I do believe that for the bingo, this will count towards reading a book that is set in two different time periods. So I do know of that prompt it will fit, and I'm sure it will fit other prompts, especially if your name is Kate, then this would fit the prompt to read a book by an author with the same name as you. And I'm sure there are others. So I hope you will join in with this read-along. Let me know down below if you think you might participate. Of course, there are other read-alongs going on for the bingo. So far, we have the ones that Sarah has created as her overall group reads. There is a book for each month in a different subgenre of romance. The first subgenre we're reading right now in June is contemporary. So for two points, you could read the book with the group, which is called Hot in Hellcat Canyon by Julianne Long. Or for one point, you could just pick any contemporary romance and read that for one point. I don't think you can double up. I don't think you could read this and another contemporary to get three points. Although that's an idea, Sarah. I think that's going overboard. But uh, anyway, I don't know. I'm not the rule maker. Then in July, we're reading a paranormal or sci-fi romance. And the one she has picked out is called Wanted and Wired. And it is on the Audible Romance Package. So that will be an easy one for me to do. And I don't know if this is on audio or not. If it's on audio, I might get this done. I have a feeling this may be a little steamier than what I normally like to read, but I might read the first chapter and just see if it's something that I want to participate in. But because I'm a co-host, I wanted to be sure that I helped get the word out that right now the group is reading this book and there are discussion threads set up for it on Sarah's Goodreads group and several people have already commented that they are reading it. Then for August, the group is reading a historical romance, and the group read is A Duke in the Night by Kelly Bowen. You get two points if you read this book, or if you pick any other historical romance to read during August, you get one point. So uh, a few people have asked about how my daughter Emily is doing, and I thought I would give you just a quick update on her health and status. And thank you, by the way, for 
praying and sending us your sweet messages of support and thoughts during her surgery day. She did have a surgery on May 29th and the plan was to do a corpus callosotomy which basically divides the lobes of the brain to keep seizures from starting on one side and jumping over encompassing the whole brain which creates drop seizures. That part of the surgery didn't happen. She had what the doctor described as abnormal bleeding and he has done almost 200 of these surgeries and has never had anyone who has had that kind of issue. So he tried a couple of things that he might could have done to keep going but it wasn't going to work and so he told us he had to just back out and he is going to let her heal a little bit and in a few weeks go back in with a laser instead of a scalpel and hope to accomplish the same result. He does know people who have done this particular surgery using a laser. He himself hasn't done it but I have every confidence that he will prepare himself before he attempts it. He has done laser surgery, just not this particular one. So be in prayer for our surgeon as well as for Emily and us as we continue to face this. She did also have her vagus nerve stimulator removed. We realized that it was not working. It's not effective for her and they were able to remove that without any complications. So we're thankful for that. And that's basically where we are right now. Emily is still having seizures, but they are mild. We just never know when one is coming. And so we're keeping a close watch on her. That is why I'm filming in a different location. You'll see my next two or three videos in this spot. This is my living room with, uh, with the hat rack, <laughs> with hats we never wear. And uh, these are a lot of my Christian fiction that's behind me. I'm sitting here because I can see directly into her room and her bed where she's laying. And also I can see our lounge chair where she likes to sit and watch television. So this is a good spot for me to sit and film and still keep an eye on her at the same time. So that is my life update and my invitation to a read along. I hope that you will join us. I don't know if the House at Riverton is really especially a romance. I'm thinking there's probably some romance in it, but it definitely is a book that we can count towards the bingo because not every book you read for the romance book bingo has to be a romance. Some of the prompts just specify a book that is this or a novel that is that. And some of them do specify a romance. So for the prompt I'm going to use it for, it doesn't have to be a romance. But since I've never read the book, I don't really know what is in store for us. But I hope that it's going to be good. So that's all I have for this video. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.